Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, we had an accident. Uh, we knocked something off the upper deck and it came down 12 feet and hit the lower deck. And it took a pretty sizable chunk out of the deck board. Accidents do happen. It's unfortunate. The good news is we're gonna show you how to repair this. Now, this is a deck that has a waterproof bladder and it's face screwed with Cortex screws. So we have to basically take this board up, throw it away, cut a new one, and put a new board in. So that's what we're gonna do. And we just wanna get it done and out of the way. So this happened about an hour ago. We kind of buttoned up some things we needed to do upstairs. Now we wanna show you how we're, we're dealing with this. So now what we need to do is pull all the Cortex plugs out of the decking and then pull all the screws out and hopefully we don't strip any of those and then we can remove the board then we have to patch the waterproof bladder with some sealant and g-tape and then cut a new board fit it make sure it fits right drop it in and then reattach it replug it and then you'll never know this ever happened so follow along and see how we do before we get any further into this video please don't forget to click that subscribe button we really appreciate it. And let's get into this video. All right, so we're getting some supplies set up right now. We're gonna get some drills up here, a few fasteners so we can remove the plugs and we'll go from there. So stay tuned and let's see how long it takes us to get this done. All right, so the first thing we have to do is pull the plugs out of the board because uh, everything is face screwed and cortex. So basically I'm gonna take just a, a standard construction screw. These happen to be Simpson SD screws and I'm just gonna find where the plugs are and I'm gonna drop one in the hole and pull the plug. I'm gonna reverse it out so I can reuse this screw multiple times. If I use a stainless steel screw, then I have to throw that one away. I wouldn't be able to keep reusing it. So uh, that would be 20, 30 screws on one board at 25 cents a piece. You know, you're spending three or four bucks. It's easier just to use one screw that you can just pull all the plugs with and, and not have to throw away. So uh, just gonna go in and try to find those plugs and pull them out. And it's that easy. You just, you, I, I, the way I do it, I just put it in. I just keep driving the screw until it pulls the plug. Then I just hit reverse. Some people actually only drive in so far and then they wiggle them out. But I think it's actually a little bit faster if you just go like that. Now that I got all the plugs out, I'm gonna take a T20 bit and I'm gonna pull all the screws out of the deck board and hopefully not strip one of them and they all come out so I can just pull this board right out. Well, it's my lucky day. We got every single screw out without any stripping. So now this board will come right out of the deck. So that's the next step, take the board out. And then we have to patch all of those holes that we just exposed. So this will go down and I will start sealing all those holes up. Because this is a waterproof bladder, if we don't take the time to seal these holes, we could cause a leak, which could potentially cost me thousands of dollars to repair. So it's very important that we go through and take the time to seal up all these uh, exposed holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, Sashko through the roof sealant, black, fill all the holes, then I'm gonna take pieces of G-tape and cover that sealant up. And then we'll put our new deck board in and screw it back down. And hopefully it looks just like it did before this damage happened. All right, so I've got some black Sashko through the roof. This works good for penetrations, anything that goes through something else. We don't necessarily do roofs, but we do waterproof decks. I'm just putting a little dab on top of each one of these old holes to seal them up. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of G-tape and just cover them all up. And then once we smash the new board in and put the new screws in, should be good to go. So there we go. Make sure that's clean. You don't need a whole lot. You don't wanna make a big old mess out of this, but you do wanna make sure that it seals properly because that's the most important thing. See, there's multiple layers of waterproof membrane tape and the sealant. And you don't want to put a big humongous lump on there because we just want it to kind of flatten out as well. You don't want it to sit too high when you're 
when you're going to put your new board in. And when you put the tape on there, you could get a little bit of compression on on there and or hydraulicking or whatever you want to call it. It is a possibility, so we don't want that to happen either. So that's why I try to flatten it out with my finger a little bit. And that kind of helps keep it from being too tall. The last thing we want is this board to end up looking too tall compared to the ones that are right next to it, right? Okay, so there's the through the roof. Awesome. And I always like to put something in the end. This stuff's pretty good. Even if you don't seal it, you can unscrew this cap and put a new cap on it and just keep going. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there like so. All right, so now all of our sealants down, we're just gonna take some strips of G-tape and just make little squares. I just need to cover that hole uh, where the, the new screw may penetrate. I'd rather do this and be super safe than just run the sealant on there and say, oh, it's probably good. Probably ain't gonna work for me. I gotta make sure that these holes are never gonna leak. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cover up everywhere I put sealant with a piece of tape, just to make sure that we don't get a leak. A lot has to happen. The water is gonna find a path of least resistance and it's not gonna be where these holes were because there's a lot of resistance going in where those fasteners were. Okay, so now that all of our tape is down, I just need to file the edges of this board. We've cut it to the same length as the last board. And I'll put it in here and make sure the spacing's all correct and we're happy with that. And once that is done, then I can go ahead and put the new fasteners back in the board. I think he should. All right guys, so we have the fasteners back in the board. All that's left to do is to cortex this thing back in place and it'll look like that damage never happened. So thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content, which is usually three days a week, sometimes two, just kind of depends on our schedule. But uh, thanks for coming to our channel. Thanks for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Hope this helps somebody in the future when they need to replace a deck board. Have a great day.